Hey, welcome back to Mind Body Soul Evolution. And yes, I know it's been a, a bit since my last video. So I thought I would get back into the swing of things by uh, sharing with you a, a little, you know, do a quick video, a little update on uh, what's been going on, um, including sharing with you about this huge, tremendous synchronicity that I've experienced on my path because yes, they continue to unfold these synchronicities and, uh, and yeah. So, you know, as I keep being asked to share with you, I will continue to do my best to share, um, despite the fact that yes, I, I've been going through my own sets of challenges and, um, steep at that. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, as some of you may know, I mean, I have been for some time now, um, going through, uh, what some might call a dark night of the soul, which, yeah, sounds like a <laughs> dun, 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 <laughs> like, like an ominous term, you know, dark night of the soul, uh, but it actually is, uh, it can be, in fact, one of the most deeply transformative opportunities of a lifetime. Make that lifetimes, yeah. Yeah, if you know how to make the most of it, that is. And, um, yeah, basically... Uh, a true dark night of the soul can really challenge every aspect of your being and turn your life inside out, upside down, and change things in ways that you would never have imagined and um, and more. You know, and every everyone's dark night is going to be unique, just like everyone's path is, but. But it is. It, it is ultimately a, a beautiful, wonderful gift and opportunity to, um, well, transform like no other. <laughs> I mean, to, into something that, you, you know, just uh, defies all uh, explanation or uh, expectations or anything you may have thought was even possible before undergoing a dark night of the soul. Okay. But anyhow, um, but yeah, I may, I may do another video in which I share, uh, specifics about my particular challenges in my dark night of the soul. But, uh, but in this video, I, I, I wanted to to share about uh, something else, just to get, you know, to kind of ease into things here um, and not get too, too, uh, <laughs> too deep right now. But, uh, but yeah, actually, um, if you're not familiar with Dark Night of the Soul, Dark Night of the Soul, I would highly recommend that one of the first places you check out, I mean, there's a lot of information out, out there on uh, this topic now and you know you'll you'll hear about it or you you'll hear explanations of what a dark night of the soul is from many spiritual luminaries and teachers and uh psychologists and uh and all of this you know now but uh, but anyhow the origins of it um of the terminology at least um would you know, I, I could, I, I would say that they could go back to, um, they probably go back to one of my personal favorite poems of all time called, uh, well, actually, <laughs> actually it does not have a name. <laughs> this poem does not, was not named. And, uh, it was written by St. John of the Cross, San Juan de la Cruz. Uh, who was a Christian mystic, Spanish Christian mystic, who um, in the mid 1500s, I believe, yeah, I believe mid 1500s, who was born and did uh, all, all his work, um, amazing work, 
and 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 in opening many doors for uh, for Christian mysticism, really. But um, but anyhow, for understanding Dark Night of the Soul and what it represents, uh, what a great opportunity it represents for the spiritual seeker. And um, anyhow, he he wrote the poem, didn't give it a name, and then he proceeded to write two books explaining what he meant and what he intended by dark night of the soul. That's how, that's how deeply moving the, this, uh, phase in his life was to him and, and, and what it is to most, uh, it certainly is to me, but anyway, um, and then two books, one of them was called Noche Oscura, which means dark night. And that's where we get the terminology. So if you're not familiar with uh, Dark Night of the Soul, definitely check out San Juan de la Cruz, St. John of the Cross, and his work that he did, like I said, primarily where, where I was born this lifetime in Madrid, all around Madrid, Spain. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, definitely highly recommend. Beautiful. Just beautiful deeply touching poem. So, um, anyhow, uh, the, the thing I wanted, the synchronicity I wanted to share with you guys, however, was in regards or, or the, the miracle, you know what I should say, I should call it what it is. The miracle that I experienced. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so since the last video that I made, because with, with the exception, last week I uploaded a video of a double rainbow that I, that I saw when I went to the store that I, yeah, that I saw. <laughs> um, but anyhow, um, that was beautiful. But anyway, no, the, the, um, the, the synchronicity I wanted to share with you guys was in regards to, if you're not familiar in on this, uh, on the, some of the last videos I did, I had mentioned this inc this intense, um, injury pain that I was going through. Okay. A few months ago, all of a sudden, seemingly I, I, um, <sighs> Yeah, seemingly from one day to the next, I I had this pain that was originating from my neck and shooting down my arm all the way down to my my uh, hand like a lightning bolt. It would feel like fire shooting down my arm, you know, pins and needles and all of this stuff. And to the point, my son had to take me to an emergency room and it was hard for me to stand for, you know, in an upright position for more than five minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was crazy. And, uh, I eventually had an MRI and they even saw, uh, clear, clearly on the MRI that a disc had popped out between my C6 and C7, um, vertebras and was pushing on my spinal cord and causing, you know, all this pain, you know, and, you know, they saw this or whatever I was sent to, you know, this is not, not the first time I've had a disc protrusion by the way, and that, that was healed. But anyhow, I, uh, I had this MRI and they saw it on the MRI and my, and it was bad enough, apparently, that my doctor and my physical therapist started to sort of, you know, kind of uh, pressure me about getting a, um, you know, tell me and pressure me about getting a, a shot, a cortisone shot in my spine, in my neck, and to start talking about surgery, the, you know, start looking at the potential for surgery. And I said, I wanted to, to hold off on it. I didn't want to jump into anything. I wanted to do my research and I wanted to contemplate well before making a decision on my health. And I wanted to also take into account Eastern approach, Eastern medicine, because 
I mean, I don't have anything against Western medicine. I don't have anything against Eastern medicine. I, I actually find value in both. And I think it's a, a more balanced approach to, and more skillful to look at the benefits of both and draw from the specifics, the specific approaches and benefits that you need for that particular condition or situation that you're facing at that moment. You know, that makes sense to me. Why have a dogmatic, you know, uh, set of rules about either approach? You know, I, I just believe in both. But anyway, I do know, however, that Western medicine has a tendency to treat and, and focus on um, symptoms and treating symptoms and relieving them rather than, um, you know, a long-term preventive approach. But if the disc was already popped out and it was pushing on my spine, you know, I, I can understand, you know, okay, they're, they're, they were pressuring me toward that. Okay, great. However, you know, I wanted to think about it. I wanted to, to, to take a little more time rather than just jump, just, just say yes. And so they told me to, okay, fine. Think about it. Um, and I kept doing my things. I kept doing, you know, my, my Qigong on, on a daily basis. My, you know, my, that's my energy cultivation practice, uh, which I think, you know, is very helpful and important if you want to access uh, ways of triggering inner healing. Oh yeah. You know, places, uh, you know, any, any sort of energy cultivation practice that's going to be extremely helpful. And, you know, like yoga, I, I didn't, I don't do yoga every day, but I, I, I do do it also. Um, meditation is huge. And although I wasn't able to be in an upright position and practice with, uh, you know, develop, continuing to develop my, my posture in which I have been, you know, working with, uh, Lotus posture, which requires that I, that I be in an upright position. And I wasn't able to do that. And I was getting bummed. I was getting, you know, uh, I, I was getting, uh, really frustrated and, and I, I was getting worried and because, I mean, I wasn't able to be in an upright, I was able to stretch it out to more than just five minutes at a time, but still after 15, 20 minutes, I would be in an excruciating amount of pain from being in an upright position. So, you know, but Hey, I meditated how I could, where I could even sitting down, laying down, you know, and that's another thing I had to embrace and accept that, that in that now, that was what I needed to do. And that was fine. You know, you do what you can, how you can, when you can. I also have to say meditation helped me to deal with um, and mitigate the intense ir ir irritable, uh, you know, irritability that was coming up for me with having, you know, pain all the time, nonstop, nonstop. That tends to make someone, you know, irritable. <laughs> and that's, you know, and meditation helps you to uh, control your actions when you're feeling so highly frustrated and irritable and mitigate those emotions. So it was very helpful in that too. Um, my breath work, you know, prana, uh, pranic exercise, pranic breathing and other, uh, breath work exercises are also vital in helping to unlock inner healing. Um, what else? Uh, so I was doing my meditations. I was doing my Qigong. I was doing some yoga. I was doing, um, of course, you know, pranic breathing, deep breathing, meditative exercises. Yeah. I was doing all this the best I can, you know, and that's all great. My, and my physical therapy, I was doing, you know, the physical therapy as prescribed the exercises, uh, at home as well. I was very good about it. Um, but it's not just, you know, beside the fact that, I mean, sure, it was great that I was, um, uh, you know, responsive and responsible uh, with my, you know, taking the reins on my health and doing the things that I should do and being good about it. That's all great. But 
even that doesn't necessarily guarantee a healing, okay? And I got to tell you, after three months, um, three and a half, four months of physical therapy and experiencing this, this intense pain so much, like I, 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 I thought I was going to go crazy. I wasn't getting enough sleep at night because, I, you know, it, it hurt to be in every position even, you know, um, and all of a sudden, just like that, from one day to the next, my symptoms disappeared. You know, I mean, I, I was not, you know, I did, I, I don't, I no longer, and I and then have not come back. It's been a few week, a couple of weeks now, you know, I, they, I, you know, it's almost like I, I'm afraid <laughs> that this is just like, you know, uh, I'm just making sure this is real, you know, but, but basically I, I don't have the pain shooting down the, the lightning bolts shooting down my arm. I don't have the, uh, pain in my muscles or tendons in my neck. None of that. It's all gone. Um, and like I said, one day to the next, I have not had a follow up MRI, but I'm willing to bet that if I did that disc, is right back where it's supposed to be. It has slid back in, in between the vertebras. And like I said, I ha I was very good um, and mindful about owning the responsibility of my, uh, of my own healing, taking responsibility for my own healing and taking adequate steps on a daily basis uh, to, to, improve my chances of, of healing. However, even, even having said that sometimes even all those good habits and all those good things are not necessarily enough to explain what happened. And that's, that's where the divine comes in. And that's where I, um, wanted to share about the unaccountable the aspect that is, um, you know, you can't account for, and that is the divine, the, the presence of the, and the hand of the divine in, in healing. And that is something that, you know, I also mentioned in my, uh, when and when and what is the age of Aquarius and five tenets for an Aquarian mindset in that video, I talk about how this huge shift that we are undergoing on, on earth right now that earth is going through and what is being birthed is, is going to be, uh, an, a new earth in which we more, uh, widely understand and accept the fact that we are co-creators co-creating and what are we co-creating with with the co-creative with the co-creative forces with the creative forces of uh source of original mind or original um or universal mind or uh creator goddess god whatever you want to call it however you want to see it but we are going to be coming into a greater understanding of how to uh, embrace working with the divine. And that is where prayer comes in, okay? And I do believe in prayer and the power of prayer and the power um, that can be bestowed by the divine. And why, you know, how does that happen or how does it work? Uh, that is not, you know, something I have an answer to, <laughs> but, but, uh, but I'd like to share with you something that I came across in my Qigong studies, interestingly enough, which so beautifully captures this, that I, you know, keep talking about, uh, about how we are moving into an era or a, an age or a period in which we are going to more commonly come to understand and accept, um, how to work with these co-creative forces. And when I came across this 
paragraph, I was like, man, I have to share about this in the video too, because it's beautiful. It's beautifully put. Um, first I will tell you, this is the, the book that I'm talking about that I, you know, cause I, I do, I study Qigong and I have been studying Qigong and I study from various sources and various, uh, teachers. And anyway, but this is, this is one of the books that I, that I w have been reading and it's called, uh, Qigong level one, level two, level three, comprehensive training manual. And it comes from press on Qi publications and in it is uh healing exercises qigong theory and presentations okay and so this paragraph is very interesting and it states um so this is what it looks like it says energy healing divine blessing and all right so this is what it says energy healing and divine blessing merging of the eastern and western philosophies this type of miraculous healing is rare christianity refers to this energy as the holy spirit to create less conflict we call it the miraculous chi Sometimes this miraculous chi will decide to land and heal the person. It may come and it may not come. It has nothing to do with breathing or qigong and its appearance can never be promised. Miraculous chi runs under different laws than universal energy or surrounding chi. It appears to have a mind of its own and comes to people while praying. Thus, I am a big believer that people pray in addition to qigong However, it's not required. That is the whole point. Prayer is not required to get a good result with Qigong. Qigong works like a machine. Yet, the greatest healers throughout history have known that the ultimate energy comes from blessing. And my own experience tells me it is the key. Supreme Science Qigong understands that everyone has different beliefs and that these, sensi these are sensitive issues. We could just not mention these phenomena to avoid problems, but I believe that most people, and studies show about 90%, do in fact believe in God, the true source, Tao, or whatever you want to call the original mind, and we believe it is in your best interest to understand the difference between the body's physical chi, universal chi, with that of the divine blessing. We encourage you to practice with sincerity. So, anyhow. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that was uh, really... Um, captivating of what I was trying to convey in, in this uh, concept that there sometimes is a component to uh, unlocking a healing from within that comes from the divine that we can, uh, in fact, um, access through prayer. And so... Uh, so that, so yeah, that, that is, uh, what I wanted to get at and what I wanted to, um, share with you guys about the experiences of, I've been having lately and this great synchronicity, which I am so grateful for. I can't tell. I mean, I was like, seriously, I was worried. I, I can't even imagine people that have to, uh, have to tackle, have to learn to tackle this level of pain with at the, with this frequency for 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 so you know for any length of time really but i mean you know i mean it was it was it was hard hard enough hard hard enough for me to deal with for the amount of time that i dealt with it and i was wondering if it would ever end and if it didn't how i was going to i mean i was seriously wondering how i was going to keep going like that it it was, um, it was unbelievable. It was unreal. And, um, <sighs> suffice it to say, 
that I feel extremely blessed and I am very grateful for this healing wherever, however it manifested and took place, including the fact that, yes, I did dot my I's and cross my T's and do the things I needed to do to improve my chances of healing. And that, of course, is helpful as well. So, but let's not forget to include and make room for the divine and the hand of the divine and the blessing that it brings that comes along with it and, and the blessing that is working, learning to work and co-create with the divine. And that is my point. That is my point with the video. That's what I wanted to share today. And uh, that is it for now. And so I send you much love, light, and peace from my heart, as always, with a capital H. <laughs> and till next time.